Thanks for watching County Report this week. I'm Susan Kennedy. The state's proposal to shift some of the cost of teacher pensions to the county has officials here on the defensive. Council President Roger Berliner and Chief Financial Officer Tim Firestein have briefed state officials on exactly what the implications would be if the county had to pick up that tab. And the effect could be devastating. Basically, what we tried to share with them is the real-world impact if over $300 million in pension costs get shifted to our county. It's something we can't afford, and the trade-offs would be significant. We showed them how these dollars are greater than three of our departments within county government, that if we need to hire more police, more fire, that this is the kinds of trade-offs that we will have to make, that we can't protect our community and absorb these shifts. So we just wanted them to understand from the county's perspective what's at stake here. County Executive Ike Leggett will present his FY13 operating budget to the council on March 15th. In the meantime, department directors are adjusting their budgets in order to fulfill a 1% reduction request across the board. Lorna Virgili sat down with the Director of Recreation to find out how potential cutbacks might impact senior and youth programs. Lorna? Susan, the Department of Recreation was asked to cut back 2%. That translates into $600,000. Now, in the words of Director Gabe Albornoz, they're doing creative things in order to maintain programs. 75,000 seniors use the county's four senior centers every year. The Active Living for Adults programs that offer activities for recreation are very popular. And seniors are very engaged members of the community that advocate for sustaining their programs. We've had our budget reduced a little over 24% over the last three years, which has meant having to cut over 40% of our staff, uh, cut the hours of operation at a number of our facilities, and eliminate a number of programs and services. But, but that's the bad news. Uh, the good news is, is that we all have also uh, been able to embrace a lot of community partnerships um, with community-based organizations, and we've also been very successful in securing grants uh, to help offset some of the, the funding cuts as well. Even in tough economic times, facilities have not closed down and most programs have remained in place. Beyond our senior centers, we offer a variety of programs that are specifically targeted to the senior population through aquatics, as well as through our community recreation centers, our weight and exercise rooms. We actually offer a discount uh, in use of our weight and exercise rooms for seniors. It's only $50 per year, which gives you an annual membership to our weight and exercise rooms at any of our facilities across the county. So it's a very good deal. And we're well positioned to help address some of the many needs in the senior community that we know are growing. The good news is that despite upcoming cuts, senior programs might remain untouched, in a way, thanks to volunteers. The other thing that's, that's wonderful about our senior programs, and in particular our senior centers, and we quantified this recently, over 85% of the staffing and the programs and services that are carried out in our senior centers are actually coordinated through volunteers. And so we have a number of incredible people in the county that have given back their time and energy and been able to help support and reinforce a lot of our programs. For more information on senior recreational programs, visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash REC. For County Report This Week, Lorna Virgili. Members of the Council's Public Safety Committee have wrapped up a discussion on a proposal to install cameras in school buses. Those cameras would be used to monitor vehicles that illegally pass school buses when they are stopped to pick up students. Councilmember Valerie Irvin introduced the measure. She says it's designed to change driver behavior. School bus drivers, I have to commend them, uh, all of them, for driving more than 100,000 students a day here in Montgomery County. And we have had no deaths based on the fact that thousands of drivers overtake school buses every single day. So uh, we're very pleased uh, with the support that we're getting on the bill, and we know we're going to save some child's life. It is a good time for the bill because we've had 1,200 reported cases in the last three years 
of people driving past school buses when the school buses are loading or unloading children. Clearly a very dangerous situation. And there's no effective way to catch them without cameras. The school bus drivers are rightly focused on helping the kids, and they can't be looking out for cars. So the cameras work on their own in that sense. And we're looking at a pilot program, in effect, to put cameras on a few dozen of the school buses where we've had the most reported violations of people driving by the school bus when the kids are getting on or off. Council President Roger Berliner has introduced a measure designed to help small businesses get through some of the complications they encounter when getting started. The Small Business Navigator would require the executive to appoint a staff person to assist small businesses in complying with county regulations and requirements. Because our small business community in particular uh, struggles in responding to all of our regulations and our county has a few regulations arguably a few too many. So we're looking to streamline our regulations, but at the same time it seems to me that they need a helping hand. We want to show small business that we will help them prosper, not hinder them in their efforts. And that hasn't always been the case. So this was just a notion that if we put somebody in government whose focus is make sure that if you have to go to uh, get a sewer permit, if you have to deal with PEPCO, that you've got somebody you can call upon that'll help you get the permits you need to open up your business. Still to come on County Report this week, a book that has been written and illustrated by a group of eighth grade Montgomery County students. We'll tell you about it. And Montgomery County takes a stand against bullying. Stay with us. Welcome back to County Report. Montgomery County Police are investigating a confidence scheme that took place recently at the Aspen Hill Shopping Center. Officer Rebecca Innocenti is here with the details of this scam. Officer, what can you tell us about this? Thank you, Susan. On January 10th at approximately 1 p.m., the female victim was walking to her car from the Capital One Bank located in the Aspen Hill Shopping Center on Connecticut Avenue when she was approached by a well-dressed male suspect. That suspect had what he said was a bag of money and asked the female victim if it was hers. A female uh, then approached the group and stated she needed help with a car payment. These two suspects, obviously working together, followed the female victim to her vehicle. And while they were there, they distracted her and were able to obtain approximately $750 from her purse, which was in the back of her vehicle. They then convinced her to withdraw $1,200 from the Capital One Bank. The female suspect entered the bank with the female victim withdrew the money and the female victim gave these two suspects the money. They told her to meet them at the giant supermarket located in the same shopping center where they would exchange some money with her. She went to the giant supermarket. The suspects were not there and she never saw them again. The two suspects were able to obtain approximately $2,000 from this victim. Now we do have surveillance video from the bank of the female suspect. We are releasing that to the public and hoping that someone out there does recognize this female suspect. Wow, and this is the only particular case like this that you know of, but you're asking folks who might be victim to this to come forward. Yes, that's true. We do see these types of confidence schemes throughout the county from time to time. These suspects uh, use different tactics, but they're always very persuasive and very aggressive. And if you think you've been a victim of a, of a confidence scheme, either by these suspects or someone else, please call the 4th District Station at 240-773-5500 or the police non-emergency number at 301-279-8000. Okay, thanks so much, Officer Rebecca Innocenti, Montgomery County Police. Students at a Silver Spring Middle School have realized the power of the pen in becoming published authors and illustrators. Montgomery County Public Schools has the story. I'm proud to let you know that your books are here, they've been published, and I will let Mr. Mayo pass them out to you, so congratulations. During a special book unveiling, student authors from Silver Spring International Middle School reviewed their illustrated children's book, which features a collection of original short stories. I like, I like how you guys made this. I'm really excited that our book was finally published, and the whole book is called Transitions because in each story there's a different message. Like there's one about your parents going through a divorce, and then you're going to a new school, or like our book is about going to therapy and the transitions through that. 
this children's book project actually uh, is a project that's in the curriculum, in the Lights, Camera, Media Literacy curriculum. And so we took it a, a step further and actually published it as a book on Amazon. So we started with just some, some typical brainstorming and free writing. And students started to recognize that they were writing about common experiences. And so they kind of teamed up and then they created these metaphorical stories about their experiences around the theme of transitions. Our short story was about immigration and we came up with this idea because it was like our experience. All of us were immigrated from another place. We had to, we had struggles in here in America. During the writing process, students learned how to use literary elements such as exposition, plot, conflict, rising action and climax to create compelling and authentic pieces of work. Students then worked with Arturo Ho, a local professional artist, through the entire illustration process, from sketches to final designs. Each student has, a, has their own way of interpreting the, um, the writings and um, coming up with their own art. I wanted them to see that they could actually make real life illustrations and I'm so glad that they saw that all their hard work led to this uh, amazing creation. This experience well, made me think that I could have my career as an author. The student authors plan on sharing their book with elementary students here in Montgomery County and throughout the country. To read reviews of the student published children's book, go to Amazon.com and search Transitions by George Mayo. Bullying in schools is on the rise and communities across the country are coming together to discuss ways to combat this problem. Obi Wobe was at the first Montgomery County Bullying in the Schools Symposium. Obi? That's right. MCM was at the Bullying in School Symposium, which was held right here at the Silver Spring Civic Building, where students, teachers, and parents came together to discuss, exchange information, and give assistance to the community on the difficult subject of bullying. Bullying is a form of aggressive behavior manifested by the use of force or coercion to affect others, particularly when the behavior is habitual and involves an imbalance of power. You know, I've never been on the other side of the table. I don't know the psychology of it or what the board dictates. I just know what it's like to walk through the hallways every day and have people say things and, you know, be the one who's actually in the situation on a daily basis. The Bullying in School Symposium was organized by the Montgomery County Committee on Hate Violence and the Montgomery County Office of Human Rights, moderated by Councilmember Valerie Irvin, to discuss prevention and intervention strategies to bullying. Well, well, the purpose of this really has been driven by almost every evening we're hearing about on television news and in newspapers about our kids being bullied in schools, uh, being afraid to even go to school, and unfortunately sometimes it even ended in death, and that's just not acceptable in Montgomery County. According to a school report, 282 incidents of bullying were confirmed in Montgomery County alone from 2009 to 2010, a number quite shocking to parents. In my opinion, parents are the first line of defense against bullying. I think that we have to instill values in our children and let them know what we expect of them and to teach them to respect other kids. Panelists at the symposium also touched on cyberbullying. Cyberbaiting um, is a new uh, sort of new phenomenon where uh, students in the classroom are actually baiting their teachers to act aggressively in a way um, and then capture that on uh, film on their digital cameras or cell phones and then post that to YouTube. Everyone at the symposium left with a binder full of information on how to deal with bullying. For more information about how you can help continue the fight against bullying in Montgomery County, email the Office of Human Rights at Committee on Hate Violence at MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. For Karen Report this week, I'm Obi Wombe. Up next on County Report, a story about a special nonprofit with a holistic approach to ending poverty. And for you history buffs, a preview of a documentary on a Quaker town settled in the 1700s. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to County Report. A Wider Circle is a nonprofit organization in Montgomery County. Its goal is to give dignity and hope to those in need. The group distributes clothes and food, and its warehouse full of furniture in Silver Spring rivals any other retail establishment. The poverty number may be around 75,000, but the number in need is probably closer to 200,000. Those who have the means, the stuff, the time, there's probably five or six to every one that needs help. So we can do it. The math is in our favor. I mean, prior to this working here, I, I wasn't aware that there were so many people in this area that were impoverished. It just, it just shocked me. To not have you know, a dining room table to eat in as a family or a bed to sleep on. The furniture we get, we bring in, and within 24 hours, it's gone. In the big picture, poverty endures because we are not as connected to one another as we need to be. Montgomery County started supporting us in 2008, and that was really at a time where we could then grow. We said, okay, we have a little bit of funding and maybe some help paying for a warehouse. We moved to this facility, first taking 5,000 square feet and now occupying about 21,000 square feet. We can make it a dignified showroom, so it almost looks like a furniture store. We save families at least $1,500 that happens to just have everything for free. Everything we get, mattresses, couches, chairs, anything fabricated, all gets steamed to help prevent against bugs. I mean, I'm with my brother, just kind of down on his luck. Um, he had an injury to his leg, so he's unable to work, you know, furnish his apartment. And it's nice that people, you know, donate items that, you know, can be reused and used now. I got beds, living room set, bedroom set, dinette set, toys for the kids, and I'm blessed. When I see a person who needs help, I can think if that person needs help, I could need help someday. So of course, if I help that person, I'm really helping myself. That's how we exist here at a wider circle, and that's how I think we have to perceive it as a county. All right, have a good day, my friend. All right. We were founded to bring a positive energy uh, and optimism to the service of those in need. And so everything we do, from our staff meetings to the service of the people when they come, to our pickups around the region, everything we do is, is infused with that positive energy and spirit. Have you ever driven to Sandy Spring? Do you know its unique history? There's a documentary premiering this month that touches upon this unique area and its history. Here's a quick glimpse. The Quakers here in this area freed the slaves before the Civil War. Sandy Spring, Maryland is home to an older generation of African Americans. This is their story. Things were so different all over the United States as far as segregation was concerned. I didn't get frustrated. I knew that's the way it is. I knew there was no other way. Back then, you know, if you were African American and a professional, you're going to be a minister, a teacher. The books and things, your school books, they hand down from the white school. Well, half the lessons was tore out of the books. We didn't have any of the amenities that were out there for other people, but we managed. And we, we kept going. He thought so much of children and so much of the community. You can't go around Sandy Spring and not hear somebody speak of my dad. Sandy Spring, Separate But Equal, premieres this month on MCTV. February is Library Lovers Month, a month-long celebration recognizing the importance of libraries in local communities. In recognition of this, the county libraries are hosting several programs for all ages throughout the county. From puppet shows to an antique book show, there's an activity for every library lover. To get a complete list of the programs available, visit montgomerycountymd.gov libraries. When we come back, Tom Pogue will be here with an update on an important transportation project. And a group of young residents are recognized for their efforts to promote safe fun for teens. Stay with us. The Weber Family Foundation has donated $15,000 for a scholarship fund for MC students with financial need. This is the family's sixth gift to the fund for a total of $115,000. 
The family has also supported other MC initiatives with grants of over a half million dollars since 2000. On February 22nd, MC celebrates Black History Month at the Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus with Sister Citizen, Black Women in American History and Culture, featuring Montgomery County Council Member Valerie Irvin and local performers. Speakers have been announced for MC's Athenaeum Symposia Spring Speaker Series at the Germantown campus. The events begin this month and continue into April, and they're free and open to the public. For more information about the endless possibilities at your community college, visit our website. Welcome back to County Report. Tom Pogue is here with our transportation update, and this week he tells us about the completion of a project that is an important part of the North Bethesda Master Plan. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update from Montgomery County. MCDOT recently completed a quarter-mile extension of Nebels Street from its previous terminus at Randolph Road to the existing segment running behind the Target store in Rockville. Earlier, a developer completed the section from this point north to the intersection of Boo and Chapman Avenues. The extension consisted of two new lanes in each direction, a new sidewalk, and a bike path. The road also includes streetlights, stormwater management, and a new traffic signal at Randolph and Nebel. This extension of Nebel will help relieve traffic congestion along Rockville Pike between the White Flint Mall and Twinbrook Parkway. It will also become part of a local circulation network parallel to the pike, linking employment areas with the White Flint and Twinbrook Metro stations, as well as a proposed Mark station at Montrose Crossing. This $13.9 million project will serve motorists, pedestrians, and bikers as White Flint evolves into one of the county's newest urban areas following a development pattern envisioned in the North Bethesda Master Plan. For information about this and other construction projects, go to MontgomeryCountyMD.gov slash MCDOT. We're working to keep you moving. Montgomery Village is home to more than 45,000 residents and it was one of the first planned communities of its kind when it was developed more than 40 years ago. The Montgomery Village Foundation has fostered the growth of that village. The ownership of public land in the village has expanded over time and now totals more than 300 acres. Today we are joined by the president of the foundation, Bob Hydorn. He's here to tell us what's happening in this unique community. Mr. Hydorn, thank you so much for being with us today. Susan, thank you for having me. I'm reading some reports lately that Montgomery Village is trying to get the word out about its community to, to potential home buyers and, and sort of a branding campaign that's underway. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, we are looking at rebranding this last fall, Money Magazine named Montgomery Village one of the 10 best communities to live in in the country. And we definitely want to promote that. As any community, there's always some issues, but we're looking forward to the future. We've just had a Vision 2030 group of residents who have told us what they would like to see in the year 2030. Therefore, we're branding to head to that, to that point. Can you tell me what some of those ideas are that the residents have? Do they have to deal with transportation, security, schools? Tell us a little bit more. It mainly has to deal with the facilities of the community, our commercial areas, and yes, security is always a point of contention. It doesn't matter what community you live in these days. But people want to see a walking community. They would like to see a revitalized village center. They, of course, definitely want to see our golf course maintained as open golf course space. It was designed to be that. Our lakes, our ponds, our wildlife, we coexist with our wildlife in Montgomery Village and enjoy doing so. The image out there, you have to admit though, some folks say there, it's a high crime area and it's overbuilt and you're trying to change that. We are definitely trying to change that and we are working on a regular basis with the Montgomery County Police. We have security companies that are hired by various homes corporations and the foundation to patrol our properties. But working with the police, the county council and the county executive, we very much wanted to have a substation 
when the 6th District station was moved. However, I've now been told this week by the executive's office, we will not be getting a substation. That is a very, very grave concern to us. Okay, you're gonna have to keep us updated on that particular situation. I wanna thank you for coming out to talk to us today. That's Bob Hydorn, president of the Montgomery Village Foundation. The Montgomery County Animal Shelter has dozens of animals that are available to good homes. Kathy Stanhope is here to introduce us to one of those critters, a friendly cat named Cosmos. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society, and this is Cosmos. Now, this is a cat with very good cat qualities. He likes to be held. He likes to be carried around. He's a nice, calm cat. He's only about 10 months old, and as you can see, he's a gray and white domestic short hair. Very sweet. He was given up by his previous owner on the sad note because they couldn't afford to keep a pet anymore, which, you know, today's economy, it's a little hard. And cats aren't too terribly expensive to keep, but sometimes you just have to make that hard decision. And the previous owner brought him here when she could no longer afford to care for him, and she's really hoping he'll find a new home, as we all are hoping. He is a great cat. You definitely want to come down and meet him. He does like to just cuddle up on your lap. He likes to play. And as I said, he's only 10 months old, and he's really looking for a new home. And I think you know you've been looking for a cat for a long time. So now is the time to come down. And when you do come down to visit him, remember we're always looking for towels or blankets or old rugs. The animals like to stay warm in the winter, and they like to cuddle up on the new towels and the new rugs. So come on down and bring those too. Give us a call at 240-773-5960 or visit us on the web at mcumaine.org and come on down and meet Cosmos and take him home to be your new very best friend. And finally, the council took time this week to recognize the Teen Escape Club Youth Cafe. This organization is geared at giving teens a safe place to hang out and take part in activities that are interesting to their age group. This means a lot to me and it means a lot to all of us because it gives kids an opportunity to have fun and do things that they otherwise may not be able to do, like play video games and play basketball. Unfortunately, not every area is safe and this provides a safe haven where kids can go out and have fun and enjoy themselves and be themselves while still being in a safe location. It allows kids to be themselves, which I believe is more important than most things. If you would like to find out when the county will be holding its next Teen Escape Club, visit the Department of Recreation website at MontgomeryCountyMD.gov. Well, that wraps up this edition of County Report this week. Be sure to tune in again next week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Susan Kennedy. Have a great week.